Hi everybody, it's me, Jessica Lahore, and we're back with another Jess Talk. This episode, all about cannabis, 420, ganja weed, and more. But before we get into this episode, make sure you subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the bell for notifications, and again, we're streaming on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music. Go and subscribe. Follow it, please. Okay, let's get into it. Attention the whore, attention the whore, attention the whore, attention, attention. Here I am walking down the street, seeing all the boys trying to take a peek. Shorts pulled up, a chest upright. Come on, boys, just take a bite. Look, but don't touch, spin it round and round. All right, everybody, this episode is all about 420, cannabis, donorism. And I thought this would be a really fun just talk to do because my views on weed have changed so much and like the purpose for it. And I mind you, I came from a time when people were buying it like it was drugs. Like you bought, you went down a creepy alley, like the friends that I knew that bought it. Cause at the time I would not even touch the shit. Um, they would go buy it. Like you'd have to find a dealer for weed. Uh, and I was like, from that time, you had to find a dealer for weed. You'd go with your friend and hope that they measured it right. No stems. And you learn little things like that as a stoner. And I had this, uh, mentality that being a stoner was such a negative thing. Like, I feel like we grow up, grew up in a society, or at least in my time where being a stoner was a bad thing. Like you, you're lazy and you're a sack of shit and stoner is a bum and you do drugs and, and you just, you don't care about life because you do whatever you want. And that's could be true in anybody's case. Like that mentality can be true for, I think anybody, but I don't think that it is attached to being a stoner. Um, and that my opinion changed way later. So back in the day, I didn't touch weed. I didn't start smoking weed or like actually getting into my stonerism until like the last maybe four or five years. Um, which is saying a lot. So when I was in college, um, I actually tried weed for the first time without knowing it as in high school. I went to this big barn. His name was Sue Cup. He was like big 400 pound guy who played football, but was also in the musical and sang in choir. He was like one of those really cool guys. And he was a big farmer, had this big ranch and he had everybody over and uh, drinking. And this is in high school. So I was so, Oh no, no the Lord said, don't drink. Uh, don't do drugs. I'm out past nine. Um, I, that kind of mentality. I'm like this innocent little goody goody. And, I would smoke hookah and I felt so cool for smoking hookah because I was 18, man, and like hookah was legal. Um, and I smoked this hookah. Mind you, they made it out of uh, like pipes that you'd find under the sink <laughs> and like milk jugs. Like they rigged this shit. And so I'm like, am I smoking meth? Like, what am I smoking? Uh, and I was really freaking out, but I was like, ah, it's cool. It looks like just a hookah, uh, but there's weed in it. And that was my first time. And I remember getting very high, but not knowing that I was high. Cause I didn't know there was weed until later. I had high, but it was very different body head combined. Like, you know, that moment where you're just like, And you just don't know what's happening, but you're like very, very, you like everything slows down. Everything takes a lot of time, but not so much time at the same time. So that was like my first time ever smoking weed. Uh, flash forward to college. Uh, a lot of my friends did weed and stuff like that. There was a guy that I was interested in that smoked weed. Um, and the way that I learned that I enjoyed it is I wouldn't smoke it and I wouldn't eat it in an edible, but I was okay with getting hot box in a steam shower. So I would just like sit in the shower, he would smoke this weed, we'd steam it up, and I would get like second high, second hand high. And that time, let me tell you, this is the funniest goddamn story. I got so high, so fucking high, um, and I was so hungry, and I called Domino's because uh, it was right across the street. And I remember talking to the guy in the phone like a baby. And I was like, a three, a four. And he's like, what's your credit card number? I was like, what's your credit card number? I was like running this guy through through this intense conversation of being stupid as a child and like in baby talk. Then the pizza gets here and I remember being a little drunk too, but mainly really high. And I took the pizza out of excitement and I slammed the door on the guy's face and I took it, dumped a bunch of Tabasco and hot sauce all over it, rolled it into a ball. I took the pizza and rolled it 
into a ball, like one giant meatball pizza. And I just started eating it like a heathen that had never, ever tasted any kind of nourishment in their life. I didn't share with that bitch. I remember the cat coming near me, his cat, and I like <coughs> swept the cat off the table because I was in my moment. Then after I was satisfied enough, uh, and I was still so high, I started getting intimate with, apparently, uh, there was a really weird order of action, but then we started getting hot and bothered, and I remember instantly sobering up for being high when I had to go eat his ass because I had never eaten ass. Somebody point me to the best ass eater. And it freaked me out so much that I completely went sober. Uh, 18 plus warning for this episode, <laughs> by the way. So that was like the next time I didn't really smoke weed or like, uh, enjoy it or try to smoke it or eat edibles until many, many, many years down the road. Um, and like, I didn't care about being around people. Um, but my perception also changed about like the idea of being a stoner. So, uh, my ex was a big stoner and then I started being, uh, associated with other stoners, felony misdemeanors, a stoner, Mara is another like these are Gandalf level stoners is what I call them. There are people that smoke. There are people that are like, oh, I can have like two milligrams of my edible and that's like perfect. Uh, there are people that are like, oh, edibles can't do anything for me. It's strictly pot. There are people that say, oh, I can't, pot doesn't even work for me. I need medical grade gummies and I need to dab. And then, you know, those people that are only dabbers, like the only way I get high is if I dab. And those are the levels, the dabbing people, those are the, the, the Gandalf level, God level stoners where no edible phases them. They're high 24 seven, like constantly smoking, but they're high functioning. Like they get their job shit done. They're nicer to people. Uh, they, they're active and they're just more clear headed at the same time while being so chill. I don't know. There's just a different level. So stoner to me is just a high function. Do I think that there's, uh, people that get high and they don't do shit and they use it as like a drug for depression kind of thing. And it really doesn't help you at all. Yes. I think that that is anybody that is going through mental health issues and are trying to use it, something to help cure it, whether that be alcohol or sex or, or drugs or music or rock and roll or eating or whatever it is. So, uh, my idea of being a stoner changed entirely. I started then changing a lot with my ex because there's nothing more that I enjoy now than like a joint at the end of the weekend. Um, I worked really hard. I completely gave all of my mental and emotional energy to people over the weekend, like sometimes a dozen shows. And I simply love hotboxing the shower, steaming it up, blasting music, dancing, and just mind, body, and soul doesn't think about anything else. Um, I think that I have a little bit of ADHD, but I also have, I don't know what the syndrome is of like thinking too much, overthinker, constantly processing, and weed settles me a little bit. Weed calms me down. Weed is, is more like a, a clear headed thing for me. So it helps me interact with people also. Um, however, there are many a time I get way too high. And if I am way too high, I cannot have a conversation with nobody. It sends me into panic. Uh, what was it the other day? I was, uh, I was hanging out and me and my friend got really, really high at the bar. And all of a sudden, like 50 people that I knew, 50 people from the service industry that I would normally say hello to and hug and everybody coming in. And I went into full panic. Like, I cannot have a full conversation, let alone say hi to people right now. I can't, I don't even know where I'm at right now. And I picked up my stuff and I left immediately. And I think everybody thought I was a dick, but I can't have high conversations. I can't do it. I also talk a lot when I'm stoned. So that's why this is a really easy, uh, a really easy, probably extra long just talk because I can talk, talk, talk. Um, what are some fun phrases? Uh, if you're not choking, you're not token. If you don't cough, you can't get off. Um, those are things that I learned. So Valerie Shears was a big influence in my stoner life. I didn't smoke, but she used to chase us around the house with a taser and try to get us to smoke. <laughs> I've only thrown up one time from being too high. Normally I'll just like pass out and that's it. Like I just get too high and I fall asleep. Um, I definitely changed my mindset. People are like, oh, are you an indica, sativa, uh, hybrid person? And I used to be specifically sativa. And then I went to a dispensary with a Gandalf level stoner, Miss Felony Misdemeanor. And I said, do you like indica sativa hybrids? She's like, I just like weed. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but don't you want to know like what, like 
what strain or like what if what how it's gonna fuck with you. She's like, no. And ever since then, I just get whatever's testing highest. So I don't know like what strains make me hungry or make me sleepy. I think a lot of it's in our head because we think that we're smoking it for a certain reason. I know that there's science behind it, but I think there's a mental piece behind it too. Like if you're going to smoke a joint because you know it makes you sleepy, you're already going to get sleepy regardless of the joint. Same thing with hunger. Anyway, so uh, that changed a lot. Now I just kind of get weed at whatever the highest percentage. I don't like vaping. I decided I don't like vaping. It's not enjoyable to me. I don't like the convenience of it lasting two seconds and coughing more and harder to charge and it gets sticky. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to vape anymore. I do have a really cool vape with my name on it though, that I was gifted this last Christmas. Um, Oh, another high story. Uh, My first cooking with Kaya cannabis uh, that I got to do here with the series that actually posted, I waited here for what, a good 45 minutes to an hour after, like on your couch? Yeah. Mind you, that was after me feeling really awkward. And so I went up to the top floor and waited two and a half hours in my car until I had to go to bingo at Mary's because I was too high to do anything. So that's a fun high story. When I'm high, I like doing finances. Like I do like cleaning, cleaning. Uh, I don't like doing it. I don't like being high cooking. I thought I did. I I don't make good creations. I think that I make good creations when I'm high. I feel like I'm like master iron chef of the world. And then I, I eat it. I'm like, well, this was, I'm going to eat it still. I'm high and it's delicious enough, but it's really not. Not not people food. <laughs> it's nothing special. Um, yeah, I love making stoner snacks. I love I love having a good gas station snack when I'm high. Beef jerky, a hot beef jerky, or like a salt and vinegar chip, um, a hot dog if it's the right time of day. Yeah, those are my go tos for sure. I definitely can eat when I'm not high, but when I'm high, I get like concerning to people because of how much I can put away. I can eat the house down, mama. Down. My first time going to a dispensary, I freaked out. So there's this guy who actually, fun fact, uh, does porn now in the city. Regardless, uh, we used to hook up on campus at CSU when we were in school. And he was a stoner, but I wasn't. And he, I was old enough to go to the dispensary, and he was not. And so he was like, yeah, we go get these. And I went into the dispensary. It looked like the front office of Saw. Like, you know when you first go? It's just like a little lobby with a door. Like, it's nothing special. And then I freaked out because the doorbell rang, and I ran out, and I said, I can't do this. And that was my first time going to a dispensary. I could not do it. It was too scary for me. So when did you have to go back? Like, how long was it until you went back? It was a while. It sure was a while. It was not worth it. Yeah, I was I was that kind of person. Um, I have a goal. I would love, um, I don't know if this will ever happen. I would love to get high with my actual sisters. You want to get high? Are we going to get high? You want to get high? Um, both of my sisters, to my knowledge, have never tried weed before. And they know that I do, but we don't really talk about it because I know if we talk about it, then they're going to scold me. But I would really love to get high with both of them. I think it would be such a fucking hoot and a holler. It would be so funny. Um, I also have always had a dream of putting on a 420 show, like a drag show, but only getting people that have never smoked weed. And so what happens is the first round of entertainers are people that uh, are stoners. And then the second round, they had an edible beforehand. So by the second round comes around, they have to perform high for the first time. The first time that I got high and performed for the first time was in Fort Collins, probably about nine years ago. Natalia Winters is a queen up north and she is a huge stoner. She, but she's also like hikes mountains regularly, like every weekend, but she's a huge stoner. And we went out and smoked her pen on this back patio before uh, I had to perform and I never smoked out of a pen I don't think ever I got so motherfucking high um, I did Shakira whenever wherever and in my head I was slaying mama I was dancing I was flipping my hair I was Shakira I felt that way and then I saw a video Shakira 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 that's too Wow. Afterwards, 
and I barely moved. I barely moved. I barely walked. I think I slipped in that video. I barely moved. Did not kill it. 10 out of 10 failed for sure. Oh yeah. I had some kind of confidence. I have confidence no matter what. Um, there was another time that, uh, I got really high to show and I, I'm at this time, not a, any kind of level stoner, but I could handle like a five or eight milligram edible. And my friend gave me one. He's like, it's 10. I was like, okay, I have, can do 10. Like I have an extra hour. Then I find out it was not a 10. It was a 20. And I had to host this goddamn show. And I pulled the DJ in and I made everybody leave the dressing room. And I said, gotta tell you something. I am so high right now. And I have to wear these shoes and I have to host a show. And I need you to tell me if I start talking, talking in circles or if I start making no sense. I need to tell you if I'm stumbling like a baby deer. I need you to let me know because I'm going to think I'm being too quick or too short or whatever. I started going into panic mode. Apparently it went really well. That's what he said. It went really well. And I felt really good about it. But God, it was terrible. I hate hosting shows high. I can't do it. Not like that. Oh God, Lord, no. You still can? Um, I can, but I don't like to. I don't like to. Why yourself in that situation? I don't like to do that. Sometimes I'll like a like a hit on a joint or a pen, maybe, but I really don't like to. I don't like to drink or, or smoke or anything. Try hard not to before the shows or during the shows. Not every day is that day. <laughs> I have to name as many different ways to say this. This t- the weeds, marijuana. marijuana. We'll use those two to start um, in thirty seconds. Okay, let's do it. Tell me when. Okay, um, weed, marijuana, THC, cannabis, uh, devil's lettuce, um, um, mota, um, shake, uh, 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 oregano, yeah, um, uh, um, um, a blanking fuck. Oh, there's so many more. Um, it was like pop, kush, ganja. Pop, kush, ganja. Yes. Hemp. Hemp. See, I did okay. Yeah. Not very well, but I did okay. Yeah. yeah. I think you did what, nine or eight? Nine, seven, eight. Eight or seven. Seven. I'll count it. Yeah, pot. What a pot. Ah, pot. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane, ganja, mama, yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a missed opportunity. I feel like I was doing really you good. Have the beginning yeah, we, clear-minded. yeah, so <laughs> clear-minded. I think overall, in my weed journey, whatever you choose best for you is is going to be your love. If you're not one that wants to partake, if you can't partake, if you just don't like it, that's totally cool. It's kind of like don't yuck up somebody's yum, okay? And also don't assume just because somebody smokes that they're lesser than or they're stupid or they don't work very hard or that they're not competent. Um, I think that's a really bad stereotype. Overall, if you are a stoner and you're choosing to smoke in any capacity, just make sure you're doing it around the right people and for the right reasons, like anything else. Tell me what you think about THC, cannabis, and your funny stories below, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, little whores, it's me, Jessica Lahore, and did you know that I'm on Cameo? That's right, Cameo is a platform where you can get personalized messages from me, the biggest whore in all of Colorado. Whether it be a birthday sing-along, a bar mitzvah, a congratulations on your new job, a congratulations you didn't get pregnant, I'm your whore for the message. So. Follow the link below, click it, and book your next cameo to surprise your best friend, your grandma, your family member, or any other little Lahore fan out there. Come on, book them now.